alerted that we are recording. Lyra uh, is recording the call. Oh, is, is that weird that it always says Lyra? <laughs> I think it's fine. Not entirely. <laughs> I'm going to be popping Pez throughout this call. So just... Popping pills? Pez. <laughs> That's going to be a good show. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Hello and welcome to the Amber Spycast, your one-stop shop for all things His Dark Materials. I'm Alaric and I'm joined by Travis and Joanna as always and we are digging deep into the Golden Compass. We're diving into chapter 16 and 17 and Joanna, would you mind kicking this episode off with your amazing recap? I'd love to, Alaric. So as the chaos of the fire drill subsides, Lyra joins the children inside the compound for warm drinks as they discuss Mrs. Coulter's arrival. Lyra informs the other children of the plan to escape Bolvanger and instructs them to be prepared for the signal, another fire drill. Groups of anxious adults are hurrying around and whispering, no doubt talking about the demon escape and how it happened. With the help of some girls, Lyra climbs into the drop ceiling and makes her way across the compound towards the conference room so she can listen in on adult conversation. Once there, Lyra overhears Mrs. Coulter questioning three male scientists. They tell Mrs. Coulter that they have invented a new instrument to more effectively cut demons away from their children. She also hears that Lord Azriel now has a death sentence hanging over his head in Svalbard. Lyra accidentally gives away her position in the ceiling and is caught. The men realize that Lyra has heard too much and take her away to silence her by performing an intercision. At the last moment, Mrs. Coulter intervenes and rescues Lyra and Pan. She takes Lyra back to her personal quarters and takes the small oilcloth pouch from around Lyra's waist. She opens the small tin, expecting to find the coveted alethiometer, but instead, her golden demon is attacked by the vicious spy fly that Lyra cleverly hid in the tin with the help of Yorick Bernison. Without hesitating, Lyra and Pan flee from the room and pull the fire alarm to alert the other children, then start a fire in the kitchen. Lyra leads the other children to freedom, using snowballs to fight off a band of Tartars. They run from the building just as Egyptians and Yorick Bernison arrive, and a battle between the worlds of Bolvanger and the Egyptians ensues. Just when it seems that Lyra and the children have escaped, Mrs. Coulter drives up in a motorized sledge and tries to seize her. Roger and Lyra fight her off, and Lee Scoresby rescues the two children and Yorick Bernison in his balloon. Lyra finally meets Serafina Pekala, a beautiful witch queen. With the help of her clan, Serafina guides the balloon towards Svalbard, where the armored bears are holding Lord Azrael prisoner. E P I C, epic, epic, epic. <laughs> uh, whoa! Well, we weren't real. I wasn't disappointed by this. Um, it pretty much lived up to expectations, lived up to the hype that was building up. Uh, if we had a hype man working this, they, they that Pullman is the hype man, and he did his job. Yeah, boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was, it was it was amazing. It was seriously like one like multiple giant action movies back to back to back, back from the kids, um, you know, in, in in from from Lyra getting snatched in the drop ceiling, which is something that happened to a friend of mine in college. To yeah, it's actually fantastic. Um, and that's a story for offline. And then <laughs> to, um, I have a drop ceiling story too. <laughs> to um, the 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 big fight between the 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 Egyptians and the Tartars, just it was so 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 epic. And Yorick Bernison just slapping fools. I love it. The. There's so many elements to discuss. I'm not even sure where to start, but I guess we could start with her, what she overhears in the conference room. Mm -hmm. And a few things that stood out to you guys and me. Uh, one thing that, that I was really taken by, and maybe I didn't pick up on so much, was that Mrs. Coulter claims that some of the nurses have been intersized already. Uh, mm -hmm. And that their demons are just glorified pets. Did you guys catch that? What was that? That was interesting, yeah. right? That was horrific. 
Yeah, yeah. like oh. yeah, it was basically like having them lobotomized. And they're just, yeah. that, maybe that was why they were so dim and so kind of slow and 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 measured. I guess there was something yes. about them, and it certainly struck Lyra in those earlier chapters. But it, it, and a, a part of me was thinking: is is Mrs. Coulter really? Is this true? Because she's she's a she's deceitful. But did you think that was a true statement? Is that true? I mean, I felt like it was a true statement. There's this weird dynamic between Lyra and Mrs. Coulter. And we we see it, um, well, we see it once, well, anyway, I don't want to ruin the part. I'll, I'll talk about it when we get there. But, um, you know, the fact that she can be so terrible and yet feel, feel so deeply for Lyra, um, that I feel like she's truthful with her because she thinks in the end it will win her over. Right. That this sort of kind of coddling but being truthful will win her over. And so she was like, well, we would never do this without testing it first. We would never do that on children before, without testing it first. So they tested these adults. Now, how willing they were, that, you know, who knows. Right. Um, but it certainly explains that creep factor that Lyra felt. You know, she couldn't quite place why this little dog creeped her out so much. And it's because they didn't they didn't have a connection. That explains it. And and the the early versions of this intercision was a violent tear right versus what it is now or what it has been which they added in um uh anesthetic uh and now it, they're, they've because of lord asriel they've come up with another like the, this guillotine that is supposed to make it quicker and maybe less painful um very, all of it's hor- horrific like there's nothing that really makes it it's like um, you know, like all to me, like all shots, I don't want to get a shot. So it doesn't matter how big the needle is. I don't want the shot mm-hmm. um, there. It's all horrific. There's no way to make this less horrific because it's not about the act, which, of course, tearing versus a guillotine sounds more horrific. But the f- end result is always going to be what it is, which is tearing apart someone's soul. Right. I just imagine the just. I question the the society that uh, makes it okay. Well, not makes it okay. It's still not okay yet, I suppose. But where that's even an option, you know? Um, Why would they want to do that? I mean, Mrs. Coulter, and I hope I'm not jumping too far ahead, but she talks about the the terrible... um, things that uh, dust and the, the demons do to uh, the person when they, they hit puberty. But it, it taking a part of their soul seems like such an extreme solution to that. I mean, that can't be the only reason, can it? Or the actual reason. It, it seems unusual. And Lyra calls her out and says, well, you know, the the masters at Jordan College are still connected to their demons and you and Lord Azriel still connect to your demons. And and, you know, the the Egyptians, I assume, is she's thinking of them as well. They're still connected to their demons and they seem like they turned out fine. So what is it that's so scary? Is it is it that they begin to question things that they shouldn't question? It's more about complex thought than it is about um, just being open to this celestial whatever it is? Um, is it more about keeping people? Is this part of that big idea that we haven't really gotten to yet that, that Pullman is talking about? That this is all about control? Control, the, the magisterium, the church. Mm-hmm. Is this their way of keeping people down in a way by making them subservient? I mean, I, I don't want to um, drag the conversation too heavy, but I almost feel like there's not a way to avoid it with this particular subject. But interstition is is very, you know, to me, it mirrors um, either like with eunuchs, you know, like like this, mm-hmm. I, this practice, like with eunuchs or, mm-hmm. you know, even now, currently, we still have this female circumcision mm-hmm. that happens. And and so I don't know how much of it is connected to sexuality Um, But that makes me feel like it's a huge part of it because they want to get before puberty, like before those sexual Mm -hmm. desires come come to fruition or really take a hold, 
they want to snip that and and kind of keep you in this more pure you know kind of younger child like state um but that that's i think a really big part of it like it's a way to control um whether it's with doctrine or whether it's with practice you know certain practices to keep people doing and going the path that they want mm -hmm. um so, yeah wow yeah i i i i read that this this these chapters like two or three times in the past few days and um at no point did it ever did i ever make that link between you know the whole female circumcision circumcision as a whole in 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 this procedure that like that's really really powerful wow well if you're taking away so that you know opens up additional questions which is after you're intersized do you never have sexual desire after that um do you become you know more like a eunuch uh or um you know like varus you mm -hmm. know is you know, what is you know what do you what do you become after losing your demon how right. much does it affect you it does it stop there are there more things that change you, know, you talked about lobotomy you know there um like in one flew over the cuckoo's nest you know you're taking away someone's um lobotomies were done on people that were agitated and were hard to control people maybe that had 80 kids that had adhd mm -hmm. at the time were getting lobotomized um women who were going through regular women stuff were getting lobotomized um so is that mirrored here when you lose your demon? Is that sort of the same thing? Is that is that the big idea in this particular part of it, leading to the bigger the bigger idea, which is the magisterium and the church and how they use these people and what they want and how they want to keep them from asking questions and the desire for knowledge? Um, do they want to do that to the entire population? It seems bigger than it seems. It seems impossible. Well, it seems like they're they wanted they're they're keeping an entire class though immune from from the procedure, the Mrs. Coulters and the Lyras and the um, Lord Azrael's. They're not going to have to go through this, right? You know, it's mm -hmm. only for the little people, the the people who like the nurses. It's uh, we didn't see them talk about you know the rest of the staff, the rest of the scientists, people who were above a certain class. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it, it seems, seems like they, they, they want to keep that lower class in its place. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of meat there. Mm -hmm. Um, the, what she hears, obviously she's horrified. So horrified, in fact, that she can't hide. She, she makes a sound. Mm -hmm. Because she's so upset by it, and that's ultimately that gives her gives away her position. Um, I found the writing in that sequence with her being dragged out of the ceiling. I feel like that was peak. It just the it that was another section or 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 a number of paragraphs that he wrote in such a way that you really felt what was happening. Mm -hmm. And the descriptions of her being pulled out of the ceiling and her holding on and um, uh, her being touched in the way that she was being restrained and uh, what Pan was going through at that time. Uh, this was, this was uh, as expected, a, a very harrowing sequence. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll be honest with you. This this sequence affected me much more greatly um, than like the revealing of Tony Macarios in in the shed. Um, and again, I'm just I, I I'm sorry that I'm taking it to some darker, deeper, darker places here. But um, you know, they when they're in the middle of, of you know they, they realize she's there. They they don't know who she is. They're grabbing her down she's kind of getting away and the only reason she doesn't get away is because 
they put their hands on pan. Right. And the description of that made my stomach turn. Um, it made my stomach turn because, and I, and he's, I mean, there's no way it's an accident that he, he's doing it to again, mirror this, you know, this kind this, the abuse, the sexual abuse that happens in, um, you know, right now that's kind of going through in the Catholic church in particular, you know, the words, the wording that he uses is not supposed to, not supposed to touch. It's bad. Like, you know, the, and it just, it wrecked me. It wrecked me inside. It really did. Um, I felt violated reading it. Uh-huh. I, I, I really did. And um, it's it, was, it was, it was a horrific thing to, to read. Um, yeah. And I just, and so, you know, I, those kind of parallels that he draws, I think there were a couple times earlier where I found some, you know, biblical or like church connections and I regretted not voicing it. Um, in, in earlier episodes, but you know, he is very intentional about mirroring things, um, whether it's Bible stories, there were some Bible stories that were mirrored in, in there, um, or even just these kind of these practices or, you know, mm-hmm. other kinds of horrors that happen because of the church. But yeah, that was, it was a gut wrenching scene. Absolutely. The, the line that stuck with me, was about the, the hand that touched where it shouldn't. Yeah. 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 Oh, oh God. Yeah. Yeah, just awful. Just, just an awful sequence. She's more frantic in this scene than we that we've ever seen her. Um, she's, she's helpless. So, she's helpless. Mm-hmm. She's confident, and of course, she fights. And she's a fighter. And it's sort of like never, never, never for her. Mm-hmm. But you can see how Pan is so rapidly changing into his sort of like trying to fly away and trying to like every single version of what he can do, what he can bring to the table as a combatant. He Uh is doing that while Lyra is shrieking and biting and fighting and scratching and pulling. They're both so feral in this sequence in a, in a like uh, uh, survival mode. Uh, She, you know, she. I think she thought she was somewhat safe from the intercision, but of course, she knows this is it. Like she, it's going to happen, and mm-hmm. there's nothing that can stop it. She's, she's never really resolved to like letting it happen, but she, she's overpowered. She's a child. You well, almost yeah, forget it, that it, she's it's a child. Not even three. That it's it's not three against against uh, one two. It's, it's six uh, against six. two. Yeah. Because yeah. the demons are even betraying. And yes. she's trying to convince the demons not to do what they're doing. It's, um, yeah, it, 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 it's really heavy. It this is one of those heavy. things where you see the compl- that many are complicit in what's happening here. Mm-hmm. This isn't like, oh, just the very top people know. You know. Now we know the nurses that were sort of like moping around that I was, I think I was saying, we were all maybe saying that like, maybe they don't know. No, they all know. There's nobody there that doesn't know. Maybe the cooks, you might be able to throw that in that they don't know. But they're all complicit in what's happening. Um, Whether they're on board or not, it doesn't matter. They're allowing it to happen. And now we see that they're using physical force to drag someone in to silence them so that Mrs. Coulter doesn't understand or hear what a shit show that everything that's going on there is. Yeah, they are. There's... They're silencing her with a metaphor for sexual violence. Yes. How? Yeah. It's like, we got to get her cut now. Not tomorrow. Now. In a, I, the, the thing that gets me about this is it's still written from the point of view of an 11 year old who doesn't get all of this, mm-hmm. you know? And if I were to hand this book to an 11 year old right now, hopefully they're not going to be able to get all this stuff. No. The the layers here, Pullman's ability to, to, you know, write at so many different levels at once. Just incredible. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, it's, uh, it was, it was incredibly, an incredibly powerful sequence at which I thought ended Even I don't know. I think the ending might have been worse when Mrs. Coulter had to be her savior, her rescuer from that scene. Yes, I mean one, Mrs. Coulter was even um, hurt by that. 
you know, when she walked in and she had to like grip the chair because it was too much for her to see. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But then Lyra, who, you know, was, was forced to owe her safety to her. Just, wow. Yes. And then Lyra is working so hard not to cry in front of her. Mm-hmm. You know, she doesn't want to show her this. She doesn't want her to see her this way. She's pissed. She's terrified and pissed. Mm-hmm. You know, um, and Mrs. Coulter's just, it's hard to even explain what, how she is in that scene. I don't, I don't know what the right word is for how she's treating Lyra and how she's talking and how the monkey, they're all just, the monkey just wants the alethiometer at that point. Mrs. Coulter is just making up a bunch of garbage trying to get Lyra off the scent, I guess, which it certainly isn't working. Lyra sees right through it. Mm-hmm. And then Lyra's weaving her own tale of her journey to, to uh, Ballvanger, which is, I'm sure, the most epic tale that Mrs. Coulter's ever heard. Uh, you know, it's like, I could almost, you know, I almost wanted to hear every, like, I wanted to hear the whole story the way she told it. And she's choking back sobs still, but tying them into her story as like, oh, I, I would probably be upset at this part of the story. So I'm going to let a sob out. But then she uh, finds her, her, she recovers herself by telling the lies again. Yes. Like she finds, safety she finds her truth and safety in her lies. Mm-hmm. The monkey again is always crossing the line. For what a demon should be allowed to do but i this scene the monkey seems to be talking to mrs coulter whispering in her ear i love it it's, it's chittering i love that chittering yeah Chitter, chittering in her you're just so like ch- ch- like talking yes sneakily and and yeah it made me think of them the movie with the giant ants the little sound they make i don't know why that <laughs> made me think of it but it's made me sad that's a, th- a throw very deep deep cut um so she so this is the this is where she's that that the plan that she put into place when she was like, "Hey, Yurik, could you make me a thing for this thing?" Um, it comes into play here pretty quickly, mm-hmm. uh, where she hands it over. She thinks the lithiometer in there, and I, you know, I like that. Uh, Ms. Culture's like, "Ooh, you've been busy or whatever." You know, it's like, uh, "Oh, nice work. Look at this. Oh, you're look. You you've been very careful." And Lyra, like, I just sort of picture her, like, slowly walking away again through the hedge, <laughs> she, knowing that it was about, to, you know, it was about to go down. So she's, like, you know, slowly backing away. Um, and then, like, all hell breaks loose, of course. She bolts. She smashes every alarm that she can find. She, this is all one person. She runs, it's like, this is like Nicolas Cage in some action movie, you know. Running into the ki- oh oh hang on a second let me go back to the kitchen and and turn on all the burners and th- oh I heard that flour explode right just all of it just throwing it in there in in the midst of the chaos it takes her so much time to do all this extra stuff that once she gets to her dorm it's empty there's nobody there and she yeah. climbs she climbs up she gets the lithiometer she gets her her warm warm clothes and then bolts and they go outside she's a she's pickle wreck. I mean, she, yes, she was pickle Rick. She's running through that <laughs> that that place, just laying waste to it. It was fantastic, absolutely fantastic, and totally earned by everything that went on. You know, absolutely, like, that sequence was totally earned by everything she'd gone through, and it was it was fantastic. We had gotten the perfect little outline of every detail that we needed to know as to how this was going to play out. And then she was, she checked off every box on the way out the front door Mm -hmm. and it was terrifically exciting. Well, and I feel like, I feel like she, I mean, she was intent on doing those things because, you know, I I think one of the words I liked, I, I think of one for Mrs. Coulter with Lyra is she's so condescending. Like she, oh, no. she is so condescending. And so while she may be able to talk to a lesser, um, I don't want to say a lesser child, I don't mean it like that, but you know, someone who doesn't quite have the, the intellect of Lyra or the wit, um, wits about them like Lyra, you know, she is so condescending. She's like, oh, yeah, like you were saying, like, oh, look, you did this little. And 
there's a part before the spy fly attacks where Lyra says that she could not ever understand how ever, ever before she thought this woman was clever. Yes. Like she finally, like she finally, it clicks for her. And so it's no longer like, oh, it's the monkey's fault. She's just like, you're terrible. Uh-huh. And then I feel like, you know, her running through and doing that is just like those last ditch efforts to just like literally burn every bridge between mm-hmm. her yeah. and Mrs. Coulter. Mm-hmm. Yep. So. so they get out into the yard and they're making a run for it, basically. And the Tartars run up and they have uh, wolf demons, right? Isn't that what yeah. they have? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And she's like, I don't, I don't know if we can get past these guys. And kind of got a little nervous there. But then the snowball trick, she breaks, pulls that thing out of her sleeve. And they, I guess they have these like thin um, or narrow like eye holes from their, for their armor. And mm-hmm. she's like aiming for the eyes. This was a great, like almost like an Ant-Man sequence where they're throwing balls and the demons are turning into little things and like moving the, the snowball so they can hit them right in the eyes. Uh-huh. Um, that was a terrific sequence. And I love like how, it, again, she just needs to create enough chaos to open a little hole. They're not going to fight them. There's no way these kids can fight these soldiers. She even refers to these uh, Tartar soldiers as uh, brave, right? She says, wow, they're really, they're really brave. You know, standing, standing up against Yorick at one point. She's like, oh, man, they are brave. Uh, didn't matter because the, the four, I think the four she's talking about being brave get like whacked Bump instantly. Right. <laughs> yeah. Wow, so brave, so dead. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. So she, they break through the lines a little bit, and that's when Yorick shows up. Of course, the kids are terrified to see this armored bear, but Lyra's like, no, 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 he's good. He's, uh, he's, he's on our side. He's with uh, me. He's with yeah, me. Gonna, he's with me, yeah. <laughs> he, he's wreaking havoc, and he does something that may, he, it, I don't have a lot of hair, but it blew my hair back. Travis, it would have blown your hair back, too. Um, <laughs> when <laughs> when Yorick kills a demon with his claws, yeah. Yes. Demon yeah. first. Not yes. a human in the demon. No, he killed the demon and the dude dropped dead. And the demon like explodes. Just it, explodes it, like, in like it, red. It's like gutted fire. Yes. Uh-huh. Oh my God. And the dude's like, doom, done. Oh, and she's like, oh, of course he died immediately. Right. <laughs> right. Like, yeah, I just wonder what his death was like. Like, did he just like turn off? Like, I thought the Matrix, I thought about when the Matrix people get pulled out and they, yeah. they die. I sort of pictured them just dying like that. Yeah, just drop it. Yeah. Yeah, that was, uh, wow. That was wild. But all, so incredible that we now know that um, demons are vulnerable to physical Yes, death. yes. That was put yeah. in there for, I mean, that was a very specific, like, as an author, he's like, "Oh, let me just make sure that we know that this can also happen because it well, has." It's underlined by the by by one of the children when they're walking through the through the snow. They're like, "I didn't even know you could hurt a demon." Yes, that's right. You know? right. So, so that means something. That's yes. going to mean something at some point. But uh, yeah, incredible that. Or my other thought was, does he have that armor? The 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 space metal the vibranium Sky iron. Sky on iron. his uh hands because as then does that is that a uh, does it give him another property as a as an yeah. assailant hmm. right i mean maybe you know a polar bear without an un, unarmed unarmored polar bear may not be able to just kill a demon like that hmm. or the other thing that it brought to mind was that uh you know, demons are much more delicate than humans because we've seen humans take uh, not necessarily like walk away happily, but still walk away from getting slapped by Yorick. Mm-hmm. This game, one swat, it's dead. Mm-hmm. And you know, my thought is that you know, it would. This is some kind of commentary on the on uh, how delicate the soul is. Absolutely, could be, yeah. And kind of how, almost how careless they are in this world with their souls. I mean, we've we've talked a lot about how, you know, how wonderful it would be to have that kind of companionship with you on uh, on a regular basis. But, um, you know, they also use their demons in ways that 
when you understand that, hey, this is your soul, it's a little disturbing. Oh, you go be my scout. You you right. be the first person to go out look for these things. That's your soul. You know, I would be such a helicopter soul parent. You know, <laughs> I would be like right on top of them all the time. I would never let them out of my sight. Right? Yeah, there's no way. It's it's yeah. like nerve wracking. You know, when we were talking about oh the you know this demon settled on being a moth, right? It's one of the people had the moth demon. It was like man, that is now thinking about it in the what Yurik just like whacked a, a wolf and it just disintegrated. Imagine a, a moth. You could like accidentally step on the moth and then die. I would assume. Right. That's why you would have to get a cockroach. If you're gonna pick a bug, pick a cockroach. <laughs> That's true. I mean, they're indestructible. Or a pangolin, I'm just saying. <laughs> Do they roll into a ball? They roll like into a, a ball. Like an ard, right? Like like, like yes. an aardvark or whatever? <gasps> God, yeah. An armadillo would be good, too, although a car could take out it. But there's no cars in this world. Uh, aren't no, there? No, just undergrounds. Well, just... we don't know. That's true. Yeah. There's, a, there's drop ceilings. There are drop ceilings. And subways. To say. And so, yeah, and subways. Ceilings, there's anything. The whole world's open to you when you've got a drop ceiling. <laughs> All right, so they're bolting. They're breaking the lines. Yurik is wreaking havoc, and the witches show up. Yes, yes, so great. Shooting arrows out of the blackness, riding on their their broomsticks. Uh, mm -hmm. So awesome. Uh, like that. This is another one. There's there's so many like stand up and cheer kind of moments in mm -hmm. this sequence where the the good guys, the heroes, are sort of like you know there's people lyra is from within she's like the trojan horse she is like breaking everyone free from inside and then the conquering heroes are arriving at the same mm -hmm. time that she's escaping so it's kind of a great so many like yeah yurik and yeah the witches and oh he killed a demon oh my god you know it's like it's like catching meal near you know it's like oh you know you're so excited about this stuff <laughs> <laughs> you're just jumping up with just gleeful Yes. Uh, about this escape and this battle and how terrific it is and we've been wanting to see the witches more and you know we know they we know they're out there but we want to see more of them um mm -hmm. and then they're they're the way they attack is kind of scary you know they just they're just flying around um unencumbered uh certainly they have the high ground and just laying waste they're just you know they, there's not that many um, enemies, they can take them out pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and even fast forwarding towards the end of these chapters, you know, the, they reveal that like they've Bolvanger, Bolvanger has been completely um, destroyed, just wiped out, mm -hmm. wiped out. They took out everybody. There's nobody left, and they even took out like nine, you know, administrative staff or whatever. It's like, oh, these are, <laughs> these people appear to be managerial. <laughs> <laughs> You know, You're not so they're just be like out that paperwork, sir. <laughs> so like um, just ter terrifically exciting stuff. But the kids are really are we still running into the like they have to really trust Lyra. And and even some of them, there was like a she was talking about the you know, there was like five adjectives in a row of like what she was doing to get kids to keep moving, you know, like pulling them up and pushing them forward and yanking them here and pushing it. Mm -hmm. She's, she's such a force of nature. And then pan is also, you know, her number two, like getting the demons on board and then telling Lyra this, you need to go help this kid and help this kid. But, but finally, but, but Pam is telling her how to help that kid. How to do, do it in the right like, way. This kid right. needs to be shoved. This kid needs to be uh, talked you know, to. Coddled. You need to be gentle you know? with this one. Yeah. Like, I, I, I just imagine, like, the demons having these little conversations, like, yes. oh, you can't do that with with Tommy over here, you know? Yeah. I feel bad for the kids that didn't have the good warm gear, you know? They had the, you know, the low rent, you know, the stuff Polyester. they got. Yeah, it just wasn't, you know, it had the, the micro down or something, you know? You yeah. knew it wasn't thick enough. You needed the, the full out down. You needed the goose down. I was going to say, you need your, your triple fat goose. Oh, absolutely. The Canadian goose. Yes. You, know, you spend that thousand dollars, you could be warm. Uh, so you feel bad, feel bad for them because they're they're getting cold. They haven't been out yeah. there that long, but it's clearly in a blizzard. They're losing Yurik's tracks and they're lo they're losing some amount of that excitement and adrenaline and hope that they had when they ran out the front door. But luckily, right at that moment, they they come upon the Egyptians and things seem fine, right? 
for John about 30 seconds. There. Yep. Uh, chapter over, close book, <laughs> continue on with my day. No, 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 no. Doesn't work out that way. She gets pulled up on a sledge, and there really is an exhale there, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, I can take a breath. We're moving on with the plot, the next thing. No. Our girl, Miss Mrs. Coulter, rolls up with her team and yanks Lyra back out. And they're making their, they're leaving with her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thinking, are they going to get her? What is happening? And then Roger. And Roger. I mean. Like, like, a, like a soldier. Yes. Yep. I mean, just, it just jumps right. And it just starts fighting for Lyra. Oh, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. it, it was such a great, you know, and he wasn't really. He's able ineffective. To, yeah. yeah. Like, he was not, <laughs> but I mean, it was know, he, for effort. You yeah, know, absolutely. Good job, Roger. Yeah. He was he was a, he's a fighter. You know, he, he's he's willing to, you know, take he's willing to jump step. He's ready to step to them, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, uh, but luckily it, it's somewhat short-lived because uh, Yurik returns right. and uh, uh, Lee's balloon appears, which he had, rewind, stolen gas from another vehicle. He uh -huh. siphoned off some, he did, he, he, yeah, that was gangster. He took that <laughs> thing and took off with, he took off with their gas. I love that. They jump on board, Yurik jumps on board, and they get the heck out of there. Um, that sequence up to that point was just so thrilling. Um, and cinematically, this is another one of those like, oh, they could just make this the whole episode. The whole thing. The whole thing. This is like a Game of Thrones, like, let's let's do the battle of the bastards just make the whole episode about this battle because there's so it's so exciting mm -hmm. these two episodes would just make a tremendous like 60 minutes of of television uh did you guys were you guys just i i was my heart was racing i was very excited i've read oh, this book up before you know i'm just i was like it was so exciting i'm very animated tonight <laughs> <laughs> We're earlier tonight. So, yeah. Ah, yeah, right. It's, a bit, it's, it's ten twenty-two. I'm feel I got the extra. You know, it's not eleven. Um, but so yeah, she, it's. Uh, oh, I wow. listened to it on uh, audio. I've, I've been listening to it on on audio. Oh, and, nice. And uh, the performances are outstanding. The performances are absolutely outstanding. Uh, Mrs. Coulter, you know that the whole condescending voice thing is just so well because it, it's a full cast audio. Mm -hmm. So Mrs. Coulter's um, condescension really comes through. Lyra is just, she's like you said, force of nature. You know, she, her, her, when, when she's pulling the kids through the snow, it's incredible. And then when uh, Yorick, you know, just shows up both times. I mean, when he, the first time he shows up and he comes, you know, kind of out of the smoke and haze and it's this outline I definitely, you know, going back to your uh, metaphor earlier, got a, you know, on your left kind of moment when he just kind of shows up. It was just so good. Mm -hmm. So good. And and then the witches were really, really well done. But I want to get into the conversation about the witches, the, the their whole situation so far, um, because I, I'm, I, I really feel like they may turn out to be my favorites in this book. Wow. There, there certainly, there certainly appear to be the key to something. Um, mm -hmm. Serafina wants to talk to Lyra. Serafina is an important individual amongst her clan, um, and she she knows enough about Lyra, and Lyra knows just enough about her that this feels like it's going to be an important conversation. Of course, Lyra's exhausted, so we didn't get to that conversation in this. Mm -hmm in this these chapters but that's a conversation that's going to be that it's going to be a heavy part of this this next few chapters i think yeah um i i really just appreciate the the description of them as being there's they seem like so airy and light and um I, I can just like hear the way they talk like sort of like breathy voices mm -hmm. and um i love that the the they're just wearing like just strips of silk you know they're not bothered by the cold and um 
Lyra's really kind of in awe of them a little bit. Mm -hmm. the, the way that she looks at them, it seems like she's like, whoa, these are, this is amazing. Um, They're the elves. They're the elves they are. of the story. Yeah, like like you know, uh, Legolas like when they uh -huh. they were walk, trudging through the snow, like Legolas walked on top of the snow, you know. Right. Um, so that is sort of a similar thing. You're you're absolutely right. And they're even archers. And they're archers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, yeah. That was it's, you know, she she's seeking Lyra out here. Um, she clearly has come to help, not maybe just because of. Fartacorum, which they certainly have a relationship, and that was another nice little bit of text about how Lyra realized why that, what was happening with them, mm -hmm. and how she was going to be young for generations, and um, Fartacorum was, you know, aging like a normal person, uh, and Lyra had sort of a understanding at that moment. What was I don't remember what the wording of that was, but I found that to be somewhat potent there at the end. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was that she hadn't realized it until just that moment. Like, That's right. The whole reality of their relationship kind of flooded her at once. It's beautiful. Can I read it? Pl yeah, sure. please do. Yeah, Lyra could see why Farter Corum loved her and why it was breaking his heart, though she had known neither of those things a moment before. He was growing old. He was an old, broken man, and she would be young for generations. It's yeah. Just... It's so sweet. It is. You know, when can we get those two together so they can have a conversation? Because I just want to see Farter Quorum and Serafina together. Isn't mm -hmm. there some kind of spell? There's it's, no age spell? There's got to be something. She's magic. That's what I'm saying. Come That's on, man. That's what I'm saying. You got to slip him a Mickey. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, you know, and just whatever. Whatever consent, it is, yeah. Con consent. Farter Quorum would say, yes, I yes. would like to drink that Mickey and become yeah. younger. Yes. And be Completely with you. voluntarily. Yes, yeah. it was a. Oh, she would get his consent. She would. He'd sign a yeah. form. Yes. Uh, yeah, that that was that was a little bit of yeah. That, that's a lot. And you know, she um. So she's she's on board this vessel. We get a little bit of Lee here. You know, hooting and hollering from the edge. Um, Lyra's also another one that seems to be more con more brave than anyone else. Just like looking over the edge. You know, looking down on the the wintry landscape and looking up at the at the beautiful uh, aurora um and you know i think roger's demon is like eh, okay i got it <laughs> like, <laughs> right. yeah, Not for me. i'm good i see it. i saw it and i love i love how the whole balloon is like because you're on the side. side yeah <laughs> He's got a big. Because Yorick like laying there in the corner, and they're all like, "It's fine." Like we've all seen those cars drive by, they're like a little low on one side. You're like, "Okay, I, I get it's it." It's me and a Mini Cooper. Um, <laughs> um, I gotta tell you, this whole sequence has really pushed me towards the the Lin Manuel Miranda thing. I can see him doing a lot of these things, and it. Uh, I'm starting to, to be a bit more confident that uh, he's going to be awesome. His his youth could work here mm -hmm. because of just the the high energy and like instead of having the gravelly gravitas of you know maybe what I had in my head and what the film did um, with Sam Sam Elliott, it's it it's it could be a, a little lighter on his feet, a little mm -hmm. quicker, a little sharper, a little faster. Um, you know, the hooting and hollering could be, it, you know, yeah. it, and I, I assume we're going to talk about the trailer later, but um, he doesn't appear to be doing an accent. No. Which may, I, I don't know if we were all happy. But I'm very happy about that. <laughs> don't need it. Don't need it. This yeah. isn't the same Texas, mm -hmm. right? It doesn't have to have an accent. It's all good. It's New York, Texas. It's New York, Texas. That's yeah. right. All I of mean, America in, is Texas. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. In, this, and, in that world. In fairness, my husband's accent it's so slight. Sure. I mean, Travis, you would know, like you can hardly hear it. But the second he's with his family, he is just twanging away. I mean, so I'm so, from Texas. I'm he, from Texas. Can yeah. You tell? Are no. you really? Oh my gosh, yeah. are you really? Yeah. I had no idea. Wow. Yeah, I grew up there. Yeah. yeah there Travis has a little. He has a little draw. You'll hear it kind of, but um. Mm -hmm. It comes out family. when you're with yes. other people. Yes, absolutely. And yes. side note, can I just tell you that in Texas, they made fun of this Eastern girl saying water. 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 
Can I tell you a quick story? Sure. Just, I mean, like, te like 10 seconds. Hey, we're all about, we're all about, uh, yeah, Flute digressing. Was in Texas, lived in Texas, went to visit Travis's family. At that time, our nephew, his nephew, Rhett, was like 10 years old, maybe wait, seven wait, years wait. old. Rhett. Rhett. Thank you for thank you for calling that. Sorry, one. I just wanted to stop there and uh, Rhett, li live I mean, in that moment. Yes, okay. Rhett. Anyway, very sweet. Rhett came up and was like, "Do you want? Can I get you anything?" And I was like, "I'd like some water." He was like, "Some what?" And I was like, "Some water." He's like, "I'm sorry." And I was like, "Some water?" And he was like, "Oh, down here we say water." And I was like, "Yo, <laughs> like <laughs> what?" Yeah, well, you know, you know the whole joke about like um, uh, someone was in uh, someone from was in Texas sitting at a bar, and the, someone said, "Hey, what college did you, did you go to?" And they said, uh, "Yale." And they said, "What college did you go to?" <laughs> Get it, Yale? I got okay. It. Anyway, that's awesome. Um, boy, we're, we we fell off the path a Sorry, little bit. Sorry, that was my bad. <laughs> No, but I, t I totally get it. And yeah, uh, the accent is is unnecessary. Um, so I, I'm glad that that seems to be they're leaning against that. That's something we all kind of had the the butterflies about. So I'm ha happy that that's not the case. Uh, but we get to see him in action here a little bit more. And he is that he's quicker and he's sharp and he's fast. And he's like, Woo you know, he seems to be having a great time in the mm -hmm. middle of this battle. He really stands alone as the one that seems completely like a i mean quite literally above it all she's kind of like okay i'm just doing my thing you know it's all good i've been through this before this reminds me of budapest you know he's totally fine um and, and that, that really rung out here that he's kind of like whatever about he doesn't seem to be concerned about much everything's going well he's good he got his gas he's good what's the worry about nobody's gonna get him up there I want to. I want to see his balloon. I'm excited about seeing the balloon. Yeah. You know, I'm seeing it here in my in my mm -hmm. noodle, but I want to see it. I just want to see that. It's also kind of oblong and funny shape. I, I feel like we're gonna see stitches. And, stitches. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm. I'm. I'm pretty. Pretty thrilled by that. It's. It's the Millennium Falcon of uh, hot air balloons. Oh yeah. You know, and and Yurik is chewy. We, I need to see there that. should be a shirt where it's like Han and or it's like Han and Chewie, but it's it's Lee. And, and Lee. That would be pretty terrific. <laughs> okay, so we need some designers to, to step get up that shirt and then we'll put it in the shop because That's I've right. been chomping at the bit to add stuff to the <laughs> shop and I don't I can't do that kind of stuff. I can just click buttons. <laughs> I <laughs> would like love pilot in that chewy font. In that oh, pilot. come on. That'd so be good. amazing. <sighs> that would be fantastic. I'm see I'm I'm seeing it and I think we can make sure. it. Yeah. I wish I had that talent. Me too. No, not. Turns out I have no talent. <laughs> um it, any other notes that we want to talk about? I mean, I want to talk about the trailer, but um it, any other stuff? I, I love the I love her throwing the bag of flour into the kitchen. I just you know, it's like, "Oh, wait, hang on a second. And then just whipping the flour into the just because maybe she heard one time that that would cause an explosion. Um you, she single-handedly just blows up a, a base, you yeah. know, it's like pretty amazing. Like I had, there, there were two ways I wanted to see that go down. One was for her to um, run out with a, a beret screaming Viva la revolution, mm -hmm. you know, and on the other hand, you know, I wanted her to slowly walk away from the explosions in the background, you know, Oh yeah. Slow I wanted motion it to be, walk. Yeah. Like the Joker. With the hospital, exactly. that's kind of oh, what I wanted. You click that would be like the, the funny, <laughs> the less funny version of that. I was thinking like she would light a cigarillo and then just like throw the, <laughs> throw the Zippo behind her, and the and ball finger would just explode. You know? <laughs> Keep the change of filthy animals. <laughs> like a little bit Clint Eastwood, but like a, an eleven-year-old girl's body, like a serape. You know, it got to be warm. Oh, it's true. Yeah. Uh, so, awesome. you know, that, that was electric to me that I, I like so much about it. I love the sequence you read, Joanna, that, that was, it's so there's, a, there's a lot of beauty here. Uh, mm -hmm. but this was really about the, the thrills. This, this really packed a lot of thrills into, you know, 60 pages or whatever, 50 pages. Well, you know, I'd say it took us entirely on a roller coaster. I mean, yeah. we went from complete horror, horror, absolute horror to, you know, exultation. 
within, like you said, those 60 pages. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it was it was amazing. Really an amazing ride. And now it seems we are going to rescue her dad? Is that, that seems to be the way they're going? She didn't know that that was necessarily where they were going when she got in the balloon, but that seems to be what they're doing. A little bit of a, a twist, because she's like, I'm going to take these kids, and we're going to we're going to go back, I'm going to go back to Jordan. Even just 10 minutes of real time before any of this happens, she's like, I'm going back to Jordan. But now, not so much. Well, I love it because Serafina Pecola says to her, like, what are we going to Svalbard for? And her unconscious, like, dr- like immediate answer is, well, to get to give Lord Azrael the alethiometer. Mm-hmm. And then Serafina Pecola is like, is it? And she's like, oh, no, no. They said in the book, it said, and then she remembered. It took her a second. Then she remembered the real reason. It was like, mm-hmm. oh, no, 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 no. So we can so we can rescue him. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, it's, I just love how that that again, that internal dialogue changed for her. She always changes it to be, you know, she finds that new thing. And that's, and so once she realized, I think that um, Mrs. What Mrs. Coulter, you know, how she was trying to take it and knowing, you know, that she wanted to keep it. She was like, now her thing is, I want to get it to, mm-hmm. I want to get it to um, Lord Azrael. But she had like a, a, um, an uncharacteristically um, less than confident moment when she's like, oh no, that's impossible. With about, with, get, with about, getting him out, uh, rescuing mm-hmm. him, mm-hmm. but she did that just after she completely laid waste to the people who would had her a few moments ago. Mm-hmm. So you know, I thought there was a, a bit of a disconnect. You know, I'm thinking she's going to be riding high. On she she could be, but she's also riding. she's got an armored bear of her own, and she's got to think, man, this is a whole place filled with these guys. That's yeah. a little daunting. That's true. And she's been told over and over again, oh, he's never getting out of there. Yeah. Well, and at some point, your luck runs out. I sure. mean, <laughs> at some point, like, you know, like, you know, maybe this is the time now that it's not going to somehow, and I won't say there were any, like, you know, Dusek Machina's in here. They're not. They're not. They're very, it's very deliberate and, and clear where these things come from. But, you know, at some point, you're just thinking maybe it's just, this is where the, this is where the, ball drops even at that moment where she's about to be intersized you know you're like is this yeah. where her luck runs out you know it mm-hmm. seems like she she's been fortunate up to this point but right. mm-hmm. you know you, you got to think you can't you can't roll you know a seven every time when you're playing craps so she's you know it's like is she due for something to go bad not to say that she she was captured and taken to bullvanger so that's something True. bad True. but True. you know she's she's not batting a thousand mm-hmm. uh but yeah yeah, and he and he 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 he's able to build that. He's able to build that in a way. Um, I was exhausted by the end of this chapter. You know, mm-hmm. like you're right, Travis. You start out and you're just like your heart is wrenched out into the floor, and then you're all built up and you're riled up, and then they fell asleep in the balloon, and I wanted a nap. Me too. too Seriously, because I was like, like when I'm done. He rolled up into the ermine and mm-hmm. he went into her so neck. I desperately <laughs> wanted my own little ermine pillow. Yeah. I know. I was like, I'm tired. I'm going to go sleep. Yeah. I, I would like curl up with Yurik. I feel like he puts out a lot of body heat. Oh, you know what I'm I mean? Crazy. Curly, like the luck dragon, like like the meaner luck dragon. Yeah. I'm really glad you followed that up with body heat because in my brain, you just stopped with Yurik puts out. And <laughs> I was well, like, we don't know that it. yet. <laughs> we don't know that yet. We need a family friendly rating. This is, this is a well we do where's our fanfic on that <laughs> we need some fanfic it would, i know <laughs> i was just like wow we are taking this somewhere else we are going slash so. fic with alaric and yurik <laughs> <laughs> just saying alaric would be your name alaric alaric yeah. whoa yeah i get that tattooed right here <laughs> like benifer like exactly, mm, exactly. Why no forever? Al, you're right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so, uh, trailer time. Talk a little bit about that trailer that we saw at the D uh, at the um, whatever they released uh, middle of last week, right? Is we got that see... I don't think it was Comic Con. This was this was this came out uh, two days ago, maybe. The longer, longer trailer. I don't think I saw it. 
<gasps> I shared it on the page. Oh my god. Are you not reading your own page? Yes. I, I, I also did not see it. Why are we doing this podcast? <laughs> I mean, in fairness, school started for me this Fair week, enough. and it's been a little crazy. All right, I'm giving you an assignment, and we'll 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 dive a little we'll dive into it next week. Hey, you okay. know what? It's not like we're not we're the we got we got some more chapters to read, so we'll yeah. dive into it next week. But uh, yeah, like watch it right away, and then I expect instant messages as soon as you watch it for your reactions, and then next week we'll talk about it. Yeah, I posted it to a, there's a Facebook page called the Amber Spy Cast. You can go to that page on Facebook and you'll be able to find it there. I've heard of this page. <laughs> I did the work for you. <laughs> <God. laughs> this is a good, this will be a good YouTube video uh, for our YouTube <laughs> channel. We're basically <laughs> laughing at each other most of the time. Uh, but so, so we'll talk about the trailer next week, but I found it to be quite significant and, uh, there's some good meat there. However, no date still. But the Brits are saying autumn, which, you know, autumn ends like, Narrow. what, November? Autumn. Autumn. It's so broad. <laughs> that is the and, and like, date. You know, that's like two months. We have like two months. That Give me a date. What are Why we are they withholding? I don't know. I, it's it's annoying. Um, but, you know, we'll, we'll get it eventually. But autumn at least, you know, gets us. We'll see it before Thanksgiving. I, okay. I don't know. I, know. I don't know that I trust them anymore. I know, I know. Well, watch this teaser trailer, and you'll be, you'll be. And it's a, it's a real, it's a real trailer. Awesome. So buckle up. Cool. Uh, any not, other? Sixty um, percent hmm? uh, footage from previous. Uh, for, you know. The sizzle reports. reel. Exactly. Yeah. Um. Man, that dude. Uh, <laughs> no one is going to get this. No one who listens no, to this is this is, this is deep get cuts. This. this is deep cuts. Uh, yeah. So I thought um, I was intrigued by that that uh, Star Wars Episode Nine trailer. I was super or, excited. This is a real. Yeah, me too. It's it talk about kind of going. This is like swinging for the fences. Last. You know, last uh, ninth film in a in a nine film saga, uh, it feels like it's going to be pretty pretty epic. It makes me I, not that I was I was already in the bag for it, honestly, uh, but I'm I'm pretty on board. There were like a hundred star destroyers, and the Empress laugh over Vader's breathing. Yes, it was basically hitting me in again all the buttons. Yes, and then and Ray had the uh, the the uh, ch- no. barbecue tongs. Yes. Or the, the top six. The top six, yeah. Uh-huh. Um, which I thought was pretty cool. Yes. She she looked interesting. I thought she looked gaunt uh-huh. and different, just different enough that it didn't seem that maybe she was a the same person or b what well, it was a vision. Yeah, it doesn't I, feel like it feels like a little bit of a misdirect, but maybe so obvious that it's a misdirect that maybe it isn't a misdirect. I don't buy the vision thing. Just because we did the vision uh, last week. Already movie. did it. Yeah. I don't want to do the vision again. My guess, I'm calling it now on the show, is that Ray is a, a series of clones that the Emperor made for his body, and this one happened to escape. That's why she didn't have a name. She had to get her name from the helmet because Ray isn't even her real name. She doesn't know her name. That's what she is. She's like Finn. They're the same. Is Kylo Ren a, c- a clone as well? He is not. Kylo Ren is not. Or he's a poorly designed clone of Keanu Reeves. Oh well, I guess he was actually Han and and Leia's kid. Yeah. yeah. So he's not a clone. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Okay. Yeah, that, that is bad. See, I, I was looking at it more like it's the Empire Strikes Back. Luke coming back a little, you know. A little darker. Darker. Yeah, and you know, having had having seen more than you know than he wanted, and it kind of just like that's I don't know that's what it kind of felt like to me when I was seeing it. Like he just has that. I could buy that too. You know, I don't know that we've seen someone go full red saber and still be good, uh, or black cloak and still be good. Although Luke was wearing all black. All black, right? Mm-hmm. Um, 
but the red saber is maybe a little telltale sign, but um, it could be that she, you know, got a hold of Maul's saber and put it back together with a hinge. Maybe. However, if we'll uh, find out. C-3PO turns out to be the Emperor all this time, I, I feel like he was on instant kill mode, you know, the Tony Stark instant <laughs> kill mode um, with the red eyes, you know, so I'm, I'm curious to see how that works. Oh, Him yeah. just like, you know, walking really slowly <laughs> towards people, you know, that should be entertaining. 3PO finally breaks into a run. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he's 4PO now. <laughs> oh my God. He's 4 loco. <laughs> 4 loco. <laughs> wow. Um, so... If uh, if we don't have any more epic tales to tell, this is probably a good time to end. We're going off the rails. Um, we're done. We're done. Uh, thank you guys for listening and joining us again this week. Uh, we appreciate. We'd love to hear uh, y- hear from you. So please email us at feedback at theamberspycast dot com. Visit us at the, on the web at theamberspycast dot com. We're on Facebook. We're on Instagram. Um, we really appreciate. We appreciate you all listening, and we we love doing the show. I mean, we do it for nobody, but we're thrilled that you're listening to it. Thanks, everybody. See you next time. See you later. Bye.